Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. In this week's video, I'm giving you a walk around of our brand new Horton Ambulance. So guys, one of the most requested videos I've had over the last couple months is to do a walk around video similar to the one I did while I was at Mary Greeley of the new rigs that we got at my agency up here in Colorado. So this video, we're gonna be going around the outside, going to the inside, and I'll show you the cab of this ambulance going through it piece by piece. All right, so starting out with the ambulance itself, we have a Ford chassis. This is a van chassis with a Horton box on the back. So pretty reputable brand for ambulances. Uh, this is a gas rig, it is not diesel, and it is two wheel drive. So we're still trying to figure out how that works. It does handle very well on the highway and has pretty decent acceleration for us. So coming over here to the driver's side cabinet, up here we have the placard that shows what unit we're in. It just identifies the rigs. We have about uh, 30 to 40 rigs on the road at any given time, so those are our identifiers. Coming into this cabinet, we have a large inline O2 tank. So this supplies the entire ambulance with oxygen uh, and it lasts for quite a while, even with uh, continuous CPAP. Down here, we've got two life preservers. So we have these, we've got a lot of water in our territory. So we use these, uh, not a ton, but if we need them, they're there. Down in this cabinet, this is really quite empty. We've got some triage tags, and then we have some road flares over there along with a fire extinguisher. And really, we just use this for storage of the crew's individual gear. So if all, all crews are issued bunker gear and helmets, if you're on a special team, you can put uh, some of that gear back here for your shift. Down here, we've got the router for all the Wi-Fi. All right, coming to the back here, we've got the gas cap. In this compartment, we've got our vacuum splints and our C collars down here. And we've got a ton of different sizes, C collars, everything from the adjustables to the pediatric sizes. And we have an extra O2 tank here in case we run out of our COD O2 or a bag O2. All right, coming around to the passenger side rear compartment. In here, we have all our backboards and mobilization stuff. Uh, and some splints. So we have our striker stair chair right here, which is a manual stair chair. It's got treads on it that keep somebody uh, from going down the stairs too fast. It can be operated by two people with very little effort. Really good, good tool if you need it. Then we have a old CAD board that's never opened. Uh, we have a uh, traction splint here. We're carrying the hair traction splint. So they're a little bit older, uh, but they're pretty uh, widespread use through Northern Colorado. Then we've got a split board here, a backboard, and behind that split board, we actually have what's called a Reeve stretcher, which is a yellow soft stretcher that allows us to roll somebody onto it. It works as spinal immobilization, but is a little bit more comfortable and easier to carry somebody on. All right, over here, right behind the passenger seat, this is an interior cabinet that can be opened from the outside. So you can see, we'll go through these in a second. We've got our Medbox O2 bag and suction that we can grab from the outside of the rig uh, pretty easily. So it's a nice cabinet to have uh, for if we're going on a cardiac rest or something, we're taking everything in the kitchen sink, open this up, grab what we need and go in. All right, let's go to the inside of the ambulance and take a look through all the cabinets. So as we come in the side door, we have this cabinet immediately to your right. This is one of our main cabinets. And in the top section of this cabinet, we have most of our IV supplies. So up here, we've got seven bags of saline. Now this seems like a crap ton, but these trucks are actually street corner posted, which means they do not have stations. Crews pick them up in the morning and then they go out into the city and they respond to calls all day. So everything in this truck is stocked to last them all day long. In here, we have the bin system. So each of these Tupperware bins is sealed. It's sealed with a shrink wrap. We have vehicle service techs that stock all of these ambulances for us. And like I said, they should have everything the crew needs to function for an entire day on the street. There are some ex exceptions with that. Once they come back to the station at the end of the day, they take these bins, whatever is broken or used, they give to the VSTs, 
and they switch them out for bins that are already stocked. So they have a pretty quick turnaround. It's very efficient for the fleet. So in here, we've got uh, some patient restraints, spit hoods if we need them. Uh, we have larger leather restraints back here. This one, we've got IV tubing. So these are both the micro drips and macro drips for our infusions. One floor lower, we have all the other IV supplies. So our needles, so our 14, 16 gauge, 18, 20 gauge, 22, 24 gauge, uh, the IV start kits, saline flushes, uh, IV supply bin, which is essentially uh, tape and some tubing. And then you have uh, emesis bags right here. Always important to be able to get to the emesis bags in a hurry. Down here, we have our bob, so the big orange box. This is a Pelican case, and I'll be completely honest, for medications, it does not work very well at all. Um, if this thing tips over, our meds kind of dump everywhere. Uh, in here, we've got our basic complement of both uh, ALS and BLS medications. Uh, we are looking to actually switch this to a Conterra bag in the near future because of those issues we are having with it. Now, right behind that, you can see we've got a portable suction unit, and that suction unit can be brought into calls. We can also use it to supplement the truck suction. And then one below that, we have our O2 bag. So this is a stat pack, and in there we've got a O2 tank. We have a CPAP, nasal cannula, a non rebreather, and then we also have some nebulizing treatments and a nebulizer in there as well. So easy to grab, throw on the back of the cot if we need it, but generally it just stays in this cabinet here. All right, right up here, we have our NARC box. So these are an RFID NARC box. They're hooked up. Everybody has their own ID to open it. So all the controlled substance, substances aren't actually kept in this box. They're kept up here for security purposes. And then it tracks whoever logs into it. We have to check these and log these every day and every time we give them as well. You'll notice because of COVID-19, we have the front compartment completely sealed with tape uh, so that nothing can get through there. When this truck gets ready for deployment, we actually do a plastic drape over there as well. In this front seat, this is what we call the captain seat. So it's got these really big shoulder harnesses and these are meant to allow you to move around the back of the ambulance as much as possible while staying seated and safe in the back of the rig. Uh, kind of a nice feature. These chairs are actually pretty comfortable. And then in the back of this seat, it actually has a child's car seat. So if we are transporting a kid and we don't have uh, the uh, item for the cot, the PD mate, we can put them in there. Or if they're coming with their parents that are being transported, we can put the kid right there in the seat and not worry about them, make sure they're completely safe. Over here in this cabinet, we have all our main airway adjuncts. So we've got our uh, oxygen supply bin, which is like tubing and whatnot. You've got nebulizers, uh, pediatric nasal cannulas, non rebreathers, adult non rebreathers, um, na adult nasal cannulas, and then we also have adult uh, end tidal CO2 nasal cannulas, which we use often. Behind there, we've got our bag valve masks. So these are the big bags that you breathe for a patient with. And then here we've got our CPAP. So this is the continuous positive airway pressure. Uh, that's really good for your COPD patients and asthma patients and CHF patients. Down here, we've got our main control. So we can control everything in the back of this truck. This is on the climate control screen, so you can turn it to on, off. It's all touch screen on here, but then it also has hard buttons on the outside. Uh, activate the O2 for the truck, and then you can alter the interior lights as well. So kind of nice. Uh, one of the weird functions on here is you can actually change the color of the screen. So not entirely necessary, but kind of a nice little feature there. We have two O2 Christmas trees. So one would be for your main O2 supply or for your CPAP, and then you could run a nebulizer or something else off the second one if need be. This service, we are still using the Zoll X series. I don't have a problem with Zoll. I've used these almost my entire career. Uh, but I'm still waiting to get my hands on a life pack and try that out because everybody that's used them tells me they're amazing. Coming down to this cabinet, we have our advanced airway stuff. So we've got our NPAs, so nasal pharyngeal airways, uh, OPAs, oral pharyngeal airways, uh, ET tubes, as well as some uh, side stream capnography for that, 
Uh, and then we've got our nasogastric tubes and our suction catheters. And then back here, we've got a bunch of extra suction catheters for the truck. Right here, we've got our truck suction. Uh, this is just controlled by that panel up there. And then we can use that to suction out patients' airways. One thing I didn't mention about this monitor, this has the capability of doing four lead EKGs, 12 lead EKGs. It can take blood pressures. It checks pulse, pulse ox. It also has a CO uh, monitor in that, and that can defibrillate pace and cardiovert. So very, very functional uh, for us. Up in these cabinets, uh, we like to say if you can't find something, it's probably in one of these hidden. So in here, we've just got extra batteries, and then we have a CO probe for the Zoll monitor as well as an extra battery here. The other side of that, same cabinet, different things. We've got some extra defib pads, some extra blood pressure cuffs, uh, stickers for the 12 and 4 lead EKGs, and then we have our glucometer supply bin with all the extra components for our glucometer. And then right here, this is called the CPR seat, still has these big straps here, uh, pretty comfortable, and this is where most uh, paramedics or EMTs are gonna sit to care for their patients just because it's so much easier to access them. Down here, we've got a pediatric bag, and this has uh, all of our pediatric sized equipment. So everything for airway, for uh, end tidal CO2, IV starts, it's got an OB kit in it, small BVMs, and we can just grab this, throw this on the cot, and go from there. We are kind of using the Braslo system, kind of using the hand heavy system. We're kind of somewhere in between, uh, but we're working on kind of looking at these and looking at our pediatric system as well. All right, in this cabinet, we have all of our uh, trauma supplies and some of our med admins. So we've got some needles up here as well as some hot and cold packs, saline rinses. Down here, we've got a SAM splint, a SAM pelvic binder, which is awesome, a uh, couple major dressings, some cling and acrylics, and then some four by four pads. Down here, we've got a bunch of extra gloves and then we have mega movers galore. We have a PPE bin and then some translation books, nose clamps, kind of miscellaneous items there. And in the far left of this cabinet, we are carrying a PD mate, which is to secure our little ones to the cot and transport them safely to the hospital. You're gonna notice all of these have kind of a gunk on them. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but that's actually from our decon process from uh, the COVID stuff. That's all Virix, and we just lay it on there, make sure everything's dead. It doesn't look pretty, but it's super safe for us and our patients. Coming to the side here, we've got our bench seat. So there's two large straps here. Uh, you can actually strap a backboard or a patient laying supine here with these seat belts attached down here, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, no cabinets up here, you'll notice. And then we've got sani cloths there in these seats. We've got linens in one, and we've got uh, kind of our miscellaneous, so body bags, O2 tank, uh, chucks, and our urinals, things like that. Uh, just for if you need them, you can grab them quickly. All right, coming up here, this is our first out bag. So this should look relatively familiar from my Mary Greeley video. Uh, same bag, in here, top pocket, we're carrying our glucometer, blood pressure cuff, stethoscope, uh, thermometer, along with some trauma shears, emesis bag, spit hood. Uh, so it's our quick access things, our things we're gonna have to get to assess our patients. Coming down, we've got our IV kit, IO, uh, pressure bags. One more down to that, we've got our BVM, our airway roll, which is a stat pack airway roll. And then uh, we also carry a King Vision, which is our video laryngoscope in there as well. And our stylet for our untracked King. On one side, we have all our trauma supplies. Uh, so this is our tourniquets, quick clock gauze, uh, our chest seals, everything like that. And on the other side, we actually have a small Tupperware box that has our basic medications, the medications we use the most as a service. So we have them when we bring them in. And then that also has uh, like our Narcan a D10 for our infusions and some PPE and biohazard bags. So altogether, this has almost everything we need in it. We supplement that with our med box and our O2 bag as well, but it works very well for our service. 
We are using the Stryker auto load cots. These are super nice. You saw them in the last video. Um, these have the ability to load 700 pounds without the provider expending any effort. So they're super nice. Uh, we really like them and they're in every single truck we have on our fleet, really reduce workplace injuries. On the back of the cot, we've got an O2 tank that can be hooked up to the patient. And then we have two bags. Usually there's PPE, there's a shortage. So we've kind of regulated where, the, where that stuff is. We've got some spit hoods and some emesis bags just in case. All right, now that we covered the back of the truck, we're gonna go up front and we're gonna show you everything in the cab. All right, so here in the front of the ambulance, uh, the first thing up here is we have our CAD system. So this computer, uh, we use this a lot for our dispatches. We're a pretty busy system, so we can't be on the radio a ton. So we go to this, we get the dispatch, we can see all the call notes, go in route, uh, clear, and we just have very minimal radio traffic there. So uh, kind of nice, this is a Dell laptop. Down here, we've got the control panel, just like you have in the back, except this also has your emergency master, which allows you to turn on all the emergency lights. It automatically switches the screen there. Below that, we've got our siren. So it's got three main sirens uh, that we use. These also all have air horns in them. So that is super nice to clear some traffic. We've got our truck radio. Now we use most of our pack sets. We don't use this a whole lot until we're going up in the mountain and we need that extra boost of signal. We have a Panasonic laptop up here. This is for our uh, report writing, everything like that. And then back here, we've got our gloves and some administrative stuff. So these are our action plans for the COVID stuff right now. It's changing, so we release that every day. Uh, kind of nice to have up in the cab of the truck. These trucks also have a uh, nanny cam system, for lack of a better word. They just log when you're going too fast, too slow, making turns, hitting bumps, anything like that. They log it, take a quick video, but those are not sent anywhere uh, regularly. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I really hope to do some walkthroughs of some of the other model trucks we have, as well as our special operations truck, if they let me do that. So stay tuned for those, and I will see you next week. <laughs>